Hi, my name is Graciela Casillas Boggs, and in this section, what I'd like to do is share some of my principles on combat escrima. I've trained for the last 20 years in the impact and edge weapons, and the principles that you'll see in these tapes derive from different systems, but primarily um, I've been influenced by Dan Inosanto, Angel Cabalas, and Bobby Tabuada. I've trained with others, however, I'm, I would like to share some of the principles that are more combat oriented. So most of the techniques or the tactics you'll see in this tape are going to be more simplistic, will not require very complex motor skills, but more gross motor skills. So someone who is uh, a beginner can easily learn these techniques. Before we begin going over some of the basic defensive tactics with the stick, what I'd like to do is go over a couple principles. The first is grip. When utilizing an impact weapon, it's very important that you hold on to your stick firmly. When you strike, if you open the hand upon impact, you can lose your weapon. Weapon retention is very important. It can make the difference whether you survive a situation or not. So make sure that you hold your stick firmly, that you make a tight fist around your weapon. So whether you, you strike, whichever way you're striking, that you hold your stick firmly. Secondly, stance. When we talk about stance in more of a street situation, I'm not referring to assuming more of a fighting martial arts stance. What I'm referring to is just standing in a neutral position. And the minute that you feel that you're going to be in a situation that you might have to defend yourself, what you, what you want to do is just quietly take take one of um, your legs and move back and slightly bend your knees so that you're in a position that you can move. Your weapon hand can be at your side or at that point you can bring it up slightly. But the important point in stance is that it's that you maintain your balance, that you not place your head over your knee but stay over your center of gravity so whichever way you have to move that you have lower body mobility. When we refer to footwork, there's many different ways that you can move but once again, I'd like to keep this simple, so what I'm going to share with you is just basic ways of moving on diagonal lines. By diagonal lines, I'm referring to being in a position where whichever direction you're going, if you're going to the outside or inside, you simply angle okay, with your feet. Okay, you either angle to your left or you angle to the right. The, the idea here is not to ever move straight in or not to move straight back. To better demonstrate how you would utilize this type of footwork, I'm going to have Ted Malone assist me. For example, if he strikes on the left side of my body, instead of moving straight in where I might be moving into the blow or uh, moving to a position where I might get hit with this free hand, my objective is to move on a diagonal line so as he strikes, whatever I'm doing, I'm angled out where I'm in a position to follow up. Same thing if I'm moving to the outside, if he strikes to the opposite part of my body, I want to move on a diagonal. Move straight in, you're moving into the blow. So the goal is to just move diagonally. If, if once he strikes, strike two, okay. from this position I can either switch and gain distance if I want to or I can move in. Once again on a two, if I move in, I am now at a, di a diagonal where I'm in a strong position, yet he's in a weak position, okay? Right now, we're just going to basically think of moving in when we're dealing with impact weapons, stick against stick. Unless I'm dealing with an a outside range, my objective is going to be to move in and control the individual. But speaking of ranges, it's important that you also understand that there are different ranges, whether I'm using a long stick, a 28-inch stick, or in this case, a 21-inch stick. I'm utilizing a 21-inch stick for personal preference, but also because I feel that a 21-inch stick, the shorter stick, which is more unusual, is good for moving in close and for more of a close quarter system, whereas a 28-inch stick or a longer stick is more for being out and staying out. As a smaller individual, it's important that I be able to get inside and control because I'm safer inside than I am outside at the point of the stick. So my goal is any time that he strikes to try to move in to control inside and I find that I can be more effective with a shorter stick. Although we're utilizing a shorter stick, we still have to consider range. So within the Serrata system where I adapted the short stick from, we still have three different ranges, actually four that we deal with. The first range is what we refer to as long range or largo mano. And that is the range in which if the individual strikes, I can only make contact with an extension of my hand. I cannot make contact with my fist or I cannot make contact with my kicks. 
I'm only in a position to use an extension of the hand. That's what we, we refer to as long range or largo mano. Secondly, when we want to move in closer to intermediate range, that is now the range in which if he attacks, I can defend the weapon and I can reach his body with my hand. I'm also in a position to kick. Okay, that's what we refer to as intermediate range. Okay, then we move on to close quarter. Close quarter is the range in which we are now utilizing the butt of the stick and getting ready to go into a takedown. So from close quarter range is that range now where I'm in tighter, I can now utilize the butt of my stick, I can knee, okay, elbow strike if I need to. And the last range that we deal with is our grappling range. And grappling range is now the range in which I move in and we're in tight okay, to go into to, uh, groundwork. Okay. So those are the basic ranges that, that we'll be utilizing throughout this tape. Depending on what Filipino martial art you've trained in, there's different numbering systems. And by numbering systems, we're referring to angles of attack. However, in this section, what we would like to do is keep it simple. Because in reality, when you think about it, how many ways can you possibly be attacked? So although there may be 12, 24, 36 angles, we're going to keep it simple. And we're only going to go over the first five, because that's really all you need. Okay, so the first angle, when we talk about angle one, we're re really referring to a section of the body. Although it may be a diagonal forehand strike to the side of the neck, in reality, it's any area that from the top of the head to the shoulder. An angle two, which is the opposite backhand to the side of the neck, can fall between the top of the head and the shoulder also. An angle three is a horizontal strike, usually aimed towards the midsection. You can attack the elbow, but again, it could be a horizontal strike to, to any part of the body. An angle four is opposite, backhand to the midsection, horizontal strike to the elbow. And an angle five is a thrust. And those are the angles that we're going to be dealing with.